Welcome back to the Metal Exchange. This is Chris. I'm here with Justin. And for the second week in a row, we have a very special guest who is joining us from Italy. Um, John Macaluso joined us last week. This week, we have the great Olaf Thorson of Vision Divine Labyrinth. And uh, I'm forgetting one. You have a new album coming out with um, uh, Shining Black. That's it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, Yo, guys. Hi, everybody. <laughs> yeah, thanks for joining us. This is uh, great. We got to talk about the um, the first Vision Divine album. Uh, the self titled album came out in, in 1999. It was uh, it was written by you and Fabio Leone for the most part. Um, how, how I guess the first thing I'd like to ask is um, how did this come about? I know that Fabio was your uh, the singer for Labyrinth on the first album, No Limit, and um, and then he would go on to join Rhapsody. Was this something where you felt like you still had work to do with Fabio? Um, or uh, what was the reason for uh, getting together when you had, um, you know, L- Labyrinth was going on <coughs> to full blast without Fabio? Uh, what, what brought this on? <laughs> First of all, we're talking about such a long time ago that I can barely remember. <laughs> I-, I guess if you ask every single member how things went, everybody's going to give you a bit different version of the story. Because actually what we're talking about here, it's a bunch of guys who jumped from a garage in a couple of years. We got kicked into the business, if we can call it like that. <laughs> we, had, we had no idea how and what we were doing. So... Uh, what you what you just mentioned was simply what usually happens with bands, teenager guys playing in a garage. You switch members, and well, with Fabio back then, nothing really happened. We had different ideas during the recordings of our first No Limits album with Labyrinth, and he decided to. Well, you know, like to give up. He was not sure about what the future would have <laughs> would have seen coming, and and then Rhapsody came, and it was with Rhapsody. I was very happy. We were still in touch. We were we were both based in Tuscany. We were living like thirty five kilometers away, so we were used to still go out, hang out for a beer or something. And uh, I had this offer from Metal Blade. Because Labyrinth was ready, was good, but was not released yet. They were talking to me, trying to convince me to, to make a solo album, which is something I'm a bit, I've always been a bit allergic to. I, I don't really think, I mean, we are talking about 20, more than 20 years ago, but even then, back then, I thought it was a bit too late for, for, the guitar heroes <laughs> stuff, <laughs> and I, I was not sure, so I, I gave them my yes, but not really convinced. And I was talking about this with Fabio. Then he wanted to listen to some songs, and he said, "Well, I would like to sing a couple, of maybe three songs. What do you think about?" It? I said, "That's cool." We started working on that, and and then, well, we had so much fun that we decided to turn every song into a, a real song with with vocals. And that's how it went. It, it, it was not planned, but we had fun during the making of of the album. Uh, you know, we had the good same good good vibes we had during the labyrinth time. So it was it was a hobby, <laughs> and even 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 with Vision Divine, we had no idea how things would have would have turned. Uh, or well, it's been it's been a nice journey. And then I suppose that. Uh... I guess after you had started kind of writing the songs and, and, and you and Fabio had decided to make it a, a full album, that's when you decided to bring Andrea, both Andreas and Matt in as well to kind of round out the lineup? Yeah, well, that's simple. Uh, the songs were all ready. Fabio just laid his vocals on them. So I had to, of course, to correct, to switch, to cut, arrange, rearrange. But the songs were there. So we just needed some musicians to play yet. And 
again, uh, I had my friends, good friends from Labyrinth, and it was not supposed to be a band back then. We, I, we had no idea what we would have done with it. So I, I just asked my friends, would you play that? Because I had no money to call other musicians and stuff. So I just say, w- would you do that for me? Yeah, sure, why not? And that's how it happened. I, I remember, I think I had mentioned it in the uh, in the previous episode, that when... We were teenagers at the time when the album came out, and I remember it being advertised originally as a Fabio Leone solo album. Um, and I remember I just figured, hey, if Fabio's on it, it must be good. So, um, yeah. you know, I, I think I asked for it for Christmas or for my birthday or something, and I got, and that's when I got the the CD. And I remember seeing in the the liner notes that all the songs were written by by both of you guys. Um, yeah. Did yeah. you have? Did you have like a, an idea that you wanted the music to be different from Labyrinth or were you just kind of like, oh. I, this is what I feel like writing right now and I'm just going to go with it? Well, I, I tell you something funny and it's something not not known. So it's pretty much, we call it scoop. Do you get it? <laughs> I mean, it's like a scoop. We love I, scoop. I, I'm, I'm, I'm yeah, excited. It, it's a nice <laughs> one. Uh, let me tell you, after the first No Limits album with Labyrinth, Things were a bit complicated. We got this big deal with Metal Blade, but not all the members in the band were agreeing about the right direction. Some of the guys wanted to stay. You know, No Limits was a bit more involved with techno, techno dance, keyboards and stuff. There were bands like, uh, uh, what was the jungle music, dance music, like... Uh, uh, well, I cannot even remember the names back then. But anyway, some of the guys was not agreeing with the direction to take. Uh, there has been a moment, Metal Blade was ready. They wanted us to record the album. But for a moment, I got a bit scared. That album, Return to Heaven Denied, might could have been different from what I wanted. And for the first time in my head, I, I was prepared to think that I, I might have left the band. I mean, I say, really? if, yeah, if the album is not going to be the way I want, I would do it, but then I would leave. And that was when I was also working, when I started working to Vision Divine. Right. So that's why some people ask me why the first Vision Divine sounds a bit too much similar to Labyrinth. That this is the real why, because I was like preparing myself. Like, if Labyrinth is going to be different from what I want, I respect it, but then I will switch and I need to play the music I like. I was and like, that's, yeah. and that's what ended up happening a few years later anyway, right? Yeah. 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 That, that happened later. That, that's the natural process. The, I made it to, to do Sons of Thunder which is it's the album right after Return, that's when, again, the differences were too, too big. And even if I formed a band, if I owned the Monica, I feel like if you are one against five, the, the most democratic thing you can do is to accept it and, and, and you live. Is you, you cannot kick five. I mean, I'm talking, of course, as an example, but you cannot kick five members. If you're on, if you're driving on the highway and all the cars are going to the wrong direction, you must stop and think you are the one go. You, you are the one driving in the wrong direction. So that, that's when I gave up on that, and but still in a very friendly way. We never had any any problem. With yeah, it's it's interesting to me because if you listen to those first three Labyrinth albums, and, and I don't mean to go on a tangent, but it is relevant to, to the Vision Divine you know project and its roots. But all three of those albums, you know it's Labyrinth, but the very, very different sounds on all three albums. And and to your point, No Limits has a very much of a techno feel. And, and yeah. it, it's funny because at the time that I started listening to that album um, – by the time I, by the time two thousand rolled around, I was at college or university, whatever, whatever you want to call it, and I had friends of mine that were big fans of techno, yeah. And I was the metalhead in the group, right? I was the one that was listening to power metal and labyrinth and and Halloween and st- all that stuff. 
but I played them no limits because they had never been exposed to that stuff. And they did, they, they, they couldn't yeah. believe what it was because it was like the music that they were listening to blended perfectly with, with, with what I, with what I was listening to at the time and, and whatnot. Um, so I, I just, I say that just to say, because it really did have that techno feel that appeals yeah, to yeah. that techno crowd. But then when you get to, when you get to return to heaven denied just before the vision divine album was coming out, it really went into that, you know, sound i guess that labyrinth was best known for much like the new album uh where it's that power metal with the double bass drums and and obviously roberto just soaring over the top with his vocals but you can hear the difference and the and the progression by the time you get to sons of thunder you you you, you turn you you can hear the elements of return but it's really kind of you you, you kind of make a sharp turn away from yeah, from yeah. that sound i agree i agree that uh Again, I repeat it, we are talking about a bunch of teenagers, uh, a bit more than teenagers, but not that much. And uh, we were doing as we never did anymore because it was the time to make music for yourself. We were making music for ourselves. It, we didn't give a damn about label business that what people were expecting we released no limits with techno keyboards because that was the most metal thing to do in that time what 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 is metal supposed to do back then we were thinking to upset and, and what's more upsetting than a metal band playing with techno keyboards <laughs> you know yeah. then the second album i was saying after no limits it was to cut all the keyboards off for me and, and, and switch to some something different which has always been my way of thinking if you look at my releases along the years of course i cannot completely change myself but i always try to release something unexpected unexpected because otherwise it gets stale if you do the same thing over and over well let me tell you now that i'm quite an old man if you talk business wise that's the most stupid thing you can do but rock if if you grow and i really grew up as a rock kid then the, the rebellion it's 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 exactly the opposite of what business suggests if i would think of me releasing the same album for 25 years in a row that's the most boring thing i could ever think of so i may probably have achieved a bit more or maybe less who knows but i didn't want to risk releasing always the same album again and again again and again so uh, th that's exactly as you said sons of thunder that was the right time to follow what also other people wanted to, to, to do, to try to experiment. At the same time, I was not happy with that. And I must admit, I got, I felt squeezed by the business. There were too many mechanisms pushing for the band towards one direction, like a producer uh, coming from outside, changing the songs the way I didn't like. And it, will, it was all done because of some rules, which I could understand, but at the same time, I could not accept. Makes sense, so, makes sense. So that's why Vision Divine became my free land, land of the free, you know. I, I could do anything I want. I chose a smaller label, even if Metal Blade still released uh, Stream of Consciousness. But the first two albums, I wanted... A, a small band, a small label. I wanted to have the full control, so I produced the, the album as a company. I was the pro, I was following the production in studio, and, and I didn't want any more. Even if I just tasted as a tiny bit of the business, I say I don't want to be part of this. Not the way. I know it sounds stupid. It sounds naive, but that's that's how I have always been, and how I, I still am nowadays. Well, that, that's great. Um, I guess uh, jumping back over to that first uh, Vision Divine album, um, is there is there a, a certain couple of songs that you remember writing that, that really um, 
still resonate with you today that that are some of your favorites that that you wrote on the album uh we personally <laughs> talked about uh how much we love um the the whisper especially yeah. that was both our our song for our uh our track of the week um and also the miracle um yeah those yeah. were our, our those are our two favorites so how about you you nailed it. I, I was about to, to name exactly the same songs with a special mention for New Eden, but simply because that's been the very first song which Fabio listened to. It was supposed to be all, only guitars, and, and he started singing on that, and I, I started changing. That that was the first complete song I have. But But when we were listening to the album, we knew The Whisper and The Miracle would have been great songs the, we we are still playing nowadays the miracle in example the last tour we did in march before the covid started in south america we we were playing um, the miracle yeah yeah absolutely i love it i love that song that's great uh yeah we we also uh we were saying that um we honestly we think the whisper is one of the the best power metal songs ever written by any band I, um, uh, yeah stand, uh, the only, the only thing I, I, reg- like I regret it's produ- production wise because mm-hmm. um, when I played live the, the guitar riffs are much more complicated than you might think and it's much more funny to play on stage uh, in 98 we recorded on tape no digital no no tricks and sometimes I listen to that and I regret I couldn't have the production we have nowadays because there's some parts that would really deserve some better production. But it, it doesn't sound bad anyway. I'm, I'm anyway happy about how the, the album sounds. Yeah, I mean, considering it's almost 25 25- is that right? Twenty five years old. I, yeah, twenty five years old. And, along the way, and, but it and, still sounds and, it still sounds great for. Uh, and I was so narrow narrow minded, you know. I was still convinced that the real tape was the way. So I was refusing all the computer stuff, and I, w- I was like, you know, <laughs> antichrist for me. The, the <laughs> Technology was the the antichrist, and of course now I surrendered. But back then, I was truly convinced that be- because of the albums I was loving, they were made on analog. I wanted to keep it analog. Sure. What were your major influences at the time? What were you listening to, or what was inspiring your songwriting, if you uh, recall? I tell you a few names because I, I actually always listened to basically every band I could put my hands on. But my main influences were, of course, Ingrid Malmsteen as a guitarist. Sure. Faith's Warning as a band. I always loved Faith's Warning since the <laughs> John Arch times. It's one of the bands that that that's uh, they are guilty for making me feel like every album I need to change, you know, because <laughs> they're a they, perfect example. Yeah, yeah, they were my inspiration. They, they never stayed on the same path, and and I say that's what I want to do. That because every album from them was making me run to the shop, and they they were back then they were offering you to take a listen. You want to listen? No, give me the album as it is. And I was going home, and and I say, okay, they changed again. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> if you listen to those John Arch albums and then you yeah. listen to the stuff that they, you know, they, that they would ultimately do in the nineties and then even yeah. today, it's, it's, it's incredible. The, the, the I, variety I, that's there. I think Fate's Warning have been four or five different bands that's along right. the years. I mean, that's incredible. That's incredible. And, and then of course I was a, a huge, massive fan of creator. Uh, so, yes. uh, I know because of Fabio and, and Roberto, many songs sound very melodic. But if you could keep the vocal track off and listen to the guitar the riffs, riffs, I mean, yeah. the riffs are screaming that that German that, that, power metal and the German thrash sound. Thrash. Mil, yeah. Pet- Mil Petrozza it was oh. my main inspiration. So th- there's some rip off in, in, yeah. the, in, <laughs> in the yeah yeah. I, uh, we, won't, we won't we won't we won't tell them. But oh, no, um, I, I can say this. But there's a song from creator lambs to the slaughter which has a riff which now i can't recall where exactly but i remember i was just 
trying it in rehearsal room, and one of the guys said, that sounds cool, and we kept it. I just it's changed. It's that driving force that really yeah. drives some of yeah. these songs forward. And to be honest, I even hear that a lot on Return to Heaven Denied. Even that's what, I'm, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Ret- Return to Heaven Denied, all my guitar riffs were coming from Petrozza, uh, uh, Pant- um, sorry, Sepultura, uh, 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 Forbidden, my band Mordred, uh, a yeah. band which, uh, it, it's a sin, many of the new guys don't even know Mordred. I mean, Mordred. Kids, wo- I mean, wo- they, they have to, they have to go back and actually listen to the, to where uh, all this stuff came from. You know, I still have these bands in my car. And sometimes when I'm driving and some of the kids with a Iron Maiden t-shirt, they stop and say, which band is that? And I say, come on, guy. <laughs> <laughs> Open your phone, Google there, and there will go. And one guy, oh, thank you, thank you. I'm gonna check. Toxic. My, what my one of my main inspiration as a guitarist is is Chris, uh, Josh Christian from from Toxic. Amazing yeah. guitarist, amazing guitarist. Uh, those were all all the different genres I was trying to mix all together. And, and then I knew I, I had the luck of having such a great singer as Fabio, and then later Roberto. So I knew that was very important because I knew with their voice, everything would have blended together in a new way, in a new right. way. Right. And, and you can take those riffs, but then you can add that melodic nature that their voices yeah. bring, and that's kind of like the perfect package. Yeah. Um, after the album, after the Vision Divine album was released, did you realize that you were – I guess on to something special here because obviously it would not be a, a one off and you'd, you'd go on to release, you know, seven or eight albums under that name and you're still going strong today. We knew since the very first that we wanted to be a band, especially after the mix. We were listening to the mix and we were so happy about it that we, we knew we wanted to make it grow and, and we knew we wanted to make it sound a bit different from Labyrinth. But we didn't expect uh, the, all the good things that came from that. I, I was not expecting. I remember when I was touring in South America for the very first time, 2000, the first two Italian bands to ever tour headlining Labyrinth and Vision Divine together. I, I, I was like, I don't know. I, I was like at Disneyland for me to me it was incredible incredible people waiting at the airport for for signing autographs for me it was something I couldn't really realize it took me time to realize you got a lot of time on stage you got to play uh, twice in a row huh <laughs> yeah that that was killing that was killing <laughs> they, they are trying to convince me to do it again and, and I told them I'm much older I don't know I, I could die I could die <laughs> no, it, it, no. it was <laughs> Man, you man, third, man! You get a third band to play in between, so you get yeah, a little yeah, bit of a rest. Yeah, sure, you know? sure, sure. <laughs> I bet your address will be up yeah, for they it. Want, they, they would like to put Shining Black. There you <laughs> go. <laughs> yeah. No, it sounds no. like a great tour to me. Um, yeah. <laughs> when, when, when I guess um, was it at that time then around the touring in two thousand, or was it right after the release that you realized um, that you know that you were gonna? I guess take the band out on tour and ultimately that it was going to become uh, you know, like I guess a more of a full-time thing for you. No, I never realized even now that, yeah. that, that that's a honest answer. Really. Uh, I, uh, I don't know which idea you have because I, that, that's the nice thing or sometimes it's not so nice when you meet someone, you imagine him to be some way or somehow, but I am not the star rock star type. Uh, I'm just a guy who plays the guitar and it took me, I guess, like 20 years to realize I did something important because that's when people, or maybe 15 years, but that's when people really started mentioning albums I did as something important, some magazine, like I remember the, the New Millennium and, and then 10 years, 2010, they started talking about like what was important from the, from the last century. And, and I was reading Labyrinth, Return to Heaven Denied. And I was like, well, I, this guy's crazy from England, you <laughs> know, Kerrang or something, the top 10 of the power metal albums. And I was really like, okay, there's something, 
th- th- that must mean something. Then we did the reunion. We played one show in Milano. Uh, or even the DVD, you can see the, the, the latest DVD we released. I saw flags coming from Brazil, from Japan, from Poland. Well, of course, when you, when you look at the state, from the stage, when you look at the crowd and you see flags and you realize that people took an airplane, they flew from Japan for some, then of course you feel proud. But I am not the, the rock star guy. I never, I cannot think of myself, not even as a good guitarist. I don't want to be too humble, but. You are really... very, very humble because uh, <laughs> uh, I can, yeah, yeah. I can assure you. you that everyone that is listening to us now uh, hold you in very, very high, high, high regard. Not only well, as a guitarist, uh, uh, but as a songwriter. Uh, I appreciate, but uh, w- what I'm trying to 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 make you understand is the world is so full with great artists, great musicians, great composers, great guitarists that if you leave it as a competition you're going to kill yourself. You're going to be unhappy for the rest of your life. Right. Uh, I don't have that ego. I'm very happy. I am my first fan. I mean, when I write a music, when I record an album, I sit in a studio and I want to have an orgasm. I mean, I want to feel and I say, okay, that sounds cool. I right, would like, right. And, 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 you know, you have that nice feeling when you th- listen to something like when I was listening to my bands like Fitz Warning or something, and I th- and you feel like you would like to be the guitarist of the band. And, and, and in that case, you know, you are the guitarist. That's the perfect circle closing. But that's all I have as an ego. Like when I listen to my music, I'm proud of it. And then with the time, I learned that other people like it, other people love it, and that makes me feel cool. Of course, I had the chance of doing it full time, and that's something which I call it luck because I didn't plan it. I didn't plan it. And that makes me feel guilty. I saw other people planning with great talent and they didn't make it. I truly feel, I still feel truly guilty because I feel like I stole something to these guys. But that's something you cannot control sometimes, you know. It. That's, yeah, that's very true. So there was a short period of time for a few years where you were not with Labyrinth anymore and you were focusing yeah. solely on yeah. Vision Divine. And then you decided to rejoin Labyrinth. Um, at that point, you, you said to yourself, I want to do both at this point. Like I can, I can make one one thing and the the other another thing uh, what was the thought like cuz i remember hearing when you rejoined labyrinth i was wondering oh does that mean vision divine's not going to make albums anymore and i think at that point in time the bands kind of had their own flavor so like you had it wasn't like you would listen to both and they sounded the same they each had their own style so i think at least yeah. me at least for me i was hoping that both bands would would continue on and that's what ended up happening yeah, I never thought about leaving Vision Divine. It's it's become my my home, and Vision Divine helped me to stay up when things seem to be over for me. Because when I left Labyrinth, Vision Divine had a second album which sold very good, but most of the people didn't understand the magazines I'm talking about. Uh, Send me an angel was a weird album because that's when I I was preparing to change the band, but Mm. while the members were preparing to leave, Fabio left, uh, the drummer, Matt left, uh, Andrew, the keyboard player left, everybody was leaving. And everybody thought Vision Divine was over. I, I left Labyrinth, so everybody thought I was over. Nobody was interested in, in any contact, in listening to anything. And then we released Stream of Consciousness, which, which is considered to be one of our best albums to date. So Vision Divine, it's really important for me. For me, I would never leave. I, I decided to, well, I decided, we talked together with Ale, Andrea and Roberto, and we thought it was the right time to do something again. Namely, it should have been the album which I would have released after Return to Heaven Denied. Mm. 
it doesn't mean the songs were there and they were they were the old song, but that would have been the album I, we would have released, if not after Return to Heaven Denied, at least after Sons of Thunder. So it was something I felt it had to be done. I wanted it to be done because I thought Labyrinth, which was my creature, I I, I formed a band in really the early years of, of the 90s. I wanted Labyrinth to, to release something like that. I'm talking about Return to Heaven Denied Part 2. Right, right. Um, when, when, when you, I guess, had decided uh, right before Stream of Consciousness came out, Fabio would leave the leave Vision Divine for a yeah. little bit, and, and then yes, ultimately, re- and ultimately return again. Yeah. Um, h- how did that decision come about to to have uh, Michel Lupi join, and then ultimately uh, he would then bow out again, and I guess uh, Fabio would rejoin the band? Well, you, you know how I hired <laughs> Michele Lupi. Along the years, I was receiving tons, literally tons of CDs, of demo tapes from every singer in the world. Everybody was asking me, I would like to join to do a project. And I was putting all these CDs in a box. Then it became two boxes, three boxes. But I don't throw anything. Now there's internet, is different. But back then, it was very important. Right. When Fabio when Fabio had to leave, I remembered there was an outstanding singer somewhere in a demo tape. I didn't remember who, where. I had to take all these tapes, CDs. I had to listen to each of them. I remember like after two or three hundreds, that was the guy. I said, okay, that's the guy. That's the guy. There was a number. I called him. I went to, he's living close to Bologna. We met, we had a dinner together. I, I talked about the vision divine stuff. He, he wanted to be, he said, I'm in. And that's how we started. We worked on that. Back then, Michele was <clears throat> singing basically in a cover band, which I've never heard of. So it was all, it, it was a jump <laughs> blind and, but. I was sure his voice was amazing. So yeah, it was um, it, it was so it was so different than Fabio, but so great in its own way. Yeah, I, I guess, and it really I thought very lent itself well to especially those first two albums where with Stream of Consciousness and then ultimately um, what should we call it the uh, the twenty fifth the twenty fifth hour and the perfect yeah. machine and, and perfect machine. machine yeah those three albums just one right after the other it was like really three in a row but uh, it was it was like his voice was made for those songs and it was almost yeah, like yeah. they were written absolutely yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and uh, you know why I chose him because I remembered he was. The alter ego of Brad Delp from Boston. Yes, yes. And somehow he reminded me of Michael Sweet from Striper. Yeah. So uh, when I was thinking about what do I do now, I say, wait, that that guy, that guy. And I was checking every CD, trying to find him. And of course, his talent then resulted to be what it is nowadays. But. Uh, it's been a long search, <laughs> a long search. I'm, I'm sure, and and ultimately during during his time in the band, you ultimately made it over to the United States. You got to play yeah. with Vision Divine yeah. at the at the Prague Power USA yeah. Festival. Yeah. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that experience and and playing the U.S. Uh, for the first time with with your with your baby? Uh, you know, guys, you're Americans, but to us Europeans, America, United States, but we call it America. It's it's the land where everything was born. I mean, if if you like rock, hard rock, that that's America. I know someone says there's England or whatever, which I agree. Judas Priest is one of my favorite, but to me, the music I have in my brain, it's America. Right. There's Van Halen. Uh, you name it. I mean, yeah. the, thousands, thousands of bands, even the hair metal style. But, Guns N' Roses, you like it or not, uh, every band I think of my teenager years comes from America. So right. when, when they invited us to play at the Prog Power, for me, to me, it was like you know going to the Mecca. <laughs> Say that that's wonderful. I, I was really nervous. I was really nervous. probably it's the show I found myself being 
the most nervous because no kidding. Yeah, playing in front of American guys. I mean, you you have that taste which you don't know, but you're so used to to see all the bands which started everything that I said it's gonna be tough. You know, it's like someone, it's like an American wanted willing to play football and coming to play in Italy. You know, it's right? Just, probably it's the same. <laughs> I, 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 trust me, it, it would be like if I tried to play football with you guys. Yeah, it would, yeah. It wouldn't be pretty for me. I, I can tell you that. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it was interesting because that, that show was, uh, you know, pe- st- people still talk about that show, um, from 15 years ago. And oh. then ultimately you would come back with Labyrinth. But, um, you know, th- that first, that first time, yeah, I you know everyone yeah. remembers their first, right? So this, this, that had to be something special. I was very nervous. Let me tell you, really. It's one of the show I've been, uh, and I, it affected me on stage also. I was too nervous in, in a weird way. I'm not a nervous guy usually. I'm a cold blooded guy, but that time I was in a weird way. I was nervous. I don't know. <laughs> Well, it, it didn't show. We, we, we as the fans obviously well, did not realize that. But uh, well, I'm sure internally, inside, you were probably, you know. Well, it, let, <laughs> let, let me also spend two words for, for Glenn Harveston. He's a great guy, very professional, cool guy. Uh, I can't say he's a friend because we don't chat that much, but I always love to hear from him. I like to check what's going on with Proc Power. It's I became friend with many guys from who attended the Proc Power Fest. We met along the years. It's really a nice, nice event. One, one of the nicest. One of the nicest. It, I think it it kind of bridged the the U.S. metal fans with the European, you know, metal yeah. bands. And yeah. uh, you know, we we did a, a whole episode about the first time we went to the festival and and we got to meet the guys from Gamma Ray and Angra and Ed Guy. And it was so surreal to us. Um, so we talk about the festival a lot just because I think that it really kind of, I think in a lot of ways it introduced a lot of European bands to coming to the States for the first time and then realizing that there's a following and, and maybe it's worth, you know, doing a, a, sh- a short tour. Uh, you know, I know like yeah. a lot of those that- bands never play, would come back after Prague power and do, it's you difficult. Know, two weeks of shows or whatever. So it's really know. difficult to tour in the states. It's visa, yeah. uh, traveling costs. Uh, that's something shocking to us. When when you finally put your foot on on, the, on on America and you realize the scene is not as big as it was supposed to be in the eighties. Big mm-hmm. country, that, but that's, very that's, spread, but but, but uh, so spread out, and and the fans are there. But to, to make touring worthwhile, it becomes very, very difficult. And, and yeah. what we find is a lot of bands, they do that first tour and they wind up opening for an established band like a Nightwish or something like that who's selling you know millions of records or, or, or something. And then from there, they hope to, to gain a foothold, but it's, 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 it's difficult. But um, what I can say about the festival is that it opened the ears up for, you know, for a dedicated yeah, core absolutely, audience. Absolutely. Because if uh, it I, wasn't for that, I don't think we would have ever seen Hammerfall or any of those uh, bands play the U.S. You know? uh, Glenn is, is really uh, a wonderful guy. He believes in something. He even explained to me why he keeps the festival, so to say, small and how he calculates all the risk and and the sponsor thing it's it, it's amazing it's a unique festival the way it's it's organized and planned you have wonderful names in an environment where as a fan you can enjoy the bands not in front of if you play at Wacken i i, I did three times Wacken it's wonderful but the contact with the fans is basically zero yeah, you have well, no time 60,000 people it's... you you have no way of interacting with the right. people at the prog power i play my show i get out i drink i drink a beer and i hang around people are so res- respectful so friendly really it, it's it's a peculiar thing it's it's great i, I really <laughs> wish all the best we have to get you back with Fabio to uh, kind of do a career retrospective, a, a real, you know, touching touching upon all eight albums, but uh, so, something, something to think about. It's um, a bit difficult that right now. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, well, Fabio's got his hands in so many things, right? It's uh, yeah, it's, yeah. it's it's hard. 
what what are you, I mean? Obviously, you, you you have the new album coming out with uh, with Mark Bowles in a, in a little bit. Why don't you just tell us a little bit about what you have going on in the future and um, anything else you might want to just uh, let people know about where they can find you and what they can look forward to. And well, and feel uh, free to mention when the next Vision Divine album's coming out. Yeah, you know, if you yeah, want, well, it's, if you it's part. It's you part two scoops on the. Uh, on it's the it's part of. <laughs> it's part of what I was, was about to say. Oh great! Uh, oh. After now, of course, we we finished with Mark, uh, the new Shining Black, a new song. It's just been recently released. Mm-hmm. I'm very happy about it. Very happy, much more than the first one. And again, this is one of my dream come through. I had the chance of writing not one, but two albums for the singer I was listening at home to when I was a kid. That The first time I heard that it was possible, my brain exploded. I, say, what? I was going to ask you how, I mean, w- there was a time where I think there was even a discussion that he was either joining Labyrinth or going to record with you guys. I know that never came to be, but I'm glad that it, we finally got to hear what the, yeah, what yeah. the magic was going to so, sound like. This is, for me, it's a dream come true, full stop. Right now, I'm working to the new Vision Divine. It's a long thing. It's difficult. Uh, I I talk with the guys. I don't want to release another album the way it's supposed to be. So I'm working, let's call it like a musical, it's not a musical, of course, it's a metal, but I don't want to call it metal opera because now everybody uses the word metal opera. Thanks, but Tobias, I, damn it, for, for, let, for let, ruining that for everybody. But let, no, let's, no, I, let, let's, let's explain it this way. It's going to be one single song. Should be around one hour and a half, maybe two hours. And it's going to be one single song. It does not stop. This is what I wanted to do for Stream of Consciousness. Mm. But, that's why it's divided in chapters. Right. And I had, but w- when I tried to do that, the guy from Metal Break called me and they say, I'm going to kill you with a German <laughs> accent. Say, I am going to come to Italy and I'm going to kill you if you do something. <laughs> because it was still the time when you were releasing a single and stuff. So I understand. Now right. I have, I have the DH. I have the time. I have the will, so that's that's what we are working in. I cannot promise it's going to be ready tomorrow. Uh, I hope it won't be ready late. We are planning more or less by the end of this year to have to have it ready. You know, the COVID situation made things more difficult. Some people think that because you have more time to spend at home, you have more time to write more songs. It doesn't work that way. Uh, we are not building a wall. Like if I have more hours, I, I can add more. <laughs> it doesn't concrete. It's not like that. Music <laughs> is not made of concrete. It, it, you need to have a, a free mind. And when you find yourself doing this and looking around, it doesn't work. The depression get, gets in and it makes things more difficult. But now we are, we are recapping. We are starting to work again. I'm confident it's going to be, I want me this to be, well, don't take it wrong, but my testament, this this album for for Vision Divine has to be something that is going to be difficult to push even forward. That That's what I want to do. Everybody is, is happy with that. I believe Ivan, the, 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 the guy, the, the singer, the one who sang in When All the Heroes Are Dead, is going to be a great job. It's going to be a great job. It deserves his... He's a newcomer, but he did wonderful thing in his in our last album, and this yeah. one, I'm confident it will be. Is in my opinion, is going to be the new next sensation. He already is, but you know, nowadays with the digital, it's all difficult because everything burns quickly, burns quickly. But he's another guy that if I had him, if I would have had him ten years ago. Nowadays, everybody would talk about even. Yeah, well, he, your, your first singers were pretty. Your first two singers were pretty good, so we we trust your judgment. <laughs> yeah, and the la- I mean, the last album, you could tell he's he's so talented. It's just, um, you know, I, I look forward to just more material with him because we're you know we're still, you know, you, yes. we're, I guess you're going on three years now. He's a real metal guy. Yeah, but at the same time, he has the technique like Michele. He can put down a tons of layers of 
choirs and stuff. So it's very wonderful to work with him because the the, the attitude is really heavy. He's probably the most heavy metal guy I've been working with, but he uses the voice as an instrument. He can play guitar, he plays the bass, he plays some keyboard. He's a musician, so he knows what he knows what he's doing. And I'm really I'm I'm really happy to be working with him, and hopefully something new will come out. We just released. Uh, an album with Labyrinth. So uh, the label has been talking about something new, but you know, you you can't cook too many things at the same time if you want to release some something good. So yeah, I think I mean the 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 last Labyrinth album, and I, I don't just say this on behalf of us, although it's true because it was one of our top albums of last year, but it got such great reviews. Um, I'm sure that needs to marinate a little bit or just like you know let let that run its course before you start pushing out more labyrinth material because it did you very need, well you need to wash your brain and clean up your mind before starting or, or you repeat yourself or you right. or you just you know you i don't want to do that <laughs> right gotta cleanse the palate right yeah <laughs> exactly uh, so what could we, uh, so what could we expect from, um, this, uh, shining black album that's coming out on March 18th on uh, frontiers record, uh, records. Um, you said that you, uh, you're a lot happier with it than the first album. And, uh, uh, you know, I thought the first yeah. album was great. So, uh, what, what could we expect? Uh, the first single, uh, I believe it's the same name as the album postcards from the end of yeah. the world. Um, you can check it out. I think it's on YouTube and. Apple and Spotify, all that yeah, good everywhere. stuff. Um, what, 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 what is it about this album that's got you uh, excited well, for us to hear it? You know, the first album was something, something new. You, you do it, but you have no idea where things will lead. Uh, first of all, Mark is a gentleman. I was amazed. I mean, how kind, how cooperative yes we've been exchanging so many messages and chats about songs we do this we do that but both were wondering what would people expect from such a project you know and uh, i for sure i didn't want to copy ingwe malmsteen i mean that that, that would have been cheap that would have been i'm not ingwe in any possible way you want to mean it i'm not i can't play with as he plays i cannot write the music he plays and I don't want, I didn't want as a fan, I didn't want Mark to think the same exact way. But what we did was very nice. We're very happy with what we did. The second album is different. Now we knew from where to start and where we wanted to go. We decided to be a bit more heavy, but most of all, much, much more melodic. This album is very melodic very melodic and mark did an outstanding work even he had many choirs which were not present in the first one mm. he did an amazing job I, i'm so proud and i say with it the singer is like uh how do you call it in your football it's quarterback yes it's yes the one, running, the, the one, running the whole show yeah it's the quarterback I can play all the riffs you want, but if the guitar, if the singer is not top notch, then the album is going to die. I'm lucky again. I mean, uh, in my career, I've been playing with so many amazing singers. I love the album. Uh, everybody who listened to it so far agrees with the fact that it's much, much better than the first one, which I like. Uh, our goal would be to finally have the chance also to to bring some music on stage. We wanted to play even after the first was released, but then the COVID killed everything. But this time we have some offers and hopefully we will make it to bring it on stage. That's great. Uh, we really look forward to uh, that. And we'll, we will mention it um, when the time comes that when it's released, uh, make sure everybody knows to go out and, and go listen to it for sure, but um... it's it's pretty different from from Labyrinth anyway. You may hear some guitar riffs are there, but it's much more based on vocals on on sure. melodies. So I really do. I really sit one step behind 
and and I work for the band and for and for the singer because he deserves that, and he, even if I wrote the music, but that that's the way I like it. And this band is funny to me because we have this tricky stuff. All the songs we have, even even the postcard from from the end of the world, the video. If you listen to it, there's something weird with this band. Funny, we don't have one, but we have two choruses in every song, right? Which is something we some people notice, and they they, they told us. Some songs we don't know which one is the chorus, and I said because you find yourself singing along to both. So I guess that's yeah, a good thing. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a nice thing. It's it's I mean nothing so huge that in, we invented, but still it's it's funny to listen to, and I, I like it a lot. I, I hope, and I I'm pretty confident you will also like it. I'm sure. I'm sure we will. Um, first of all, thank you for joining us. We 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 appreciate the time. Uh, yeah, I know it's uh, getting getting late uh, uh, over all, in your neck of the no, woods. I'm, I'm a rock guy. It, it, <laughs> it's, it's dinner time for me. There you, there <laughs> we, you go. We, we really we thought it was important to talk about that first Vision Divine album, just because yeah. I think it's as much as everybody loves, you know, Return to Heaven Denied. I mean, to me this kind of went right alongside it as, as far as quality goes and songwriting and everything. And, and I, I just personally always had a, a love for it, especially cause it was like a, a gift from a family member when I was a teenager. And it's just, um, <laughs> and it was just very, uh, it, it just, it's, it's so cool to talk to, to the guy who, you know, oh, was part of it. So, I mean, it, we really do appreciate the, oh, oh. Uh, the time that you took today. I'm speechless. I mean, every time someone talks like that, I, I don't know what to answer. Of course, thank you very much. Thank you very much. I, it's, it's my pleasure to talk about it. It's no, no problem. <laughs> I am the one thanking you for, for giving me this chance. Well, we, hey, we appreciate it. And, and you're very welcome. You're welcome back anytime you want to talk about anything. You know, that's uh, the just... wonderf- that's the wonderful of music. We, we talk, you're based in New York, I'm based in Italy. Thanks to the same passion, we meet, we chat. I spent a very nice hour, and that's great. That's, that's well, we, great. We, we enjoy doing I'm this podcast I'm, I'm so much, but we enjoy doing this podcast so much when we talk about these albums, but it's these interviews that we do that are the real treat for us because it's kind of like getting to – getting to to bs with some of your heroes and that's a, yeah. a cool thing and 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 that's 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 just uh you know getting to talk to um getting to talk to why am i forgetting his name justin last week uh oh john macaluso last john week macaluso oh, and, and, and great uh, guy I'm, talk I'm to a, this week amazing and, guy amazing guy we, yeah we, he we i got a lot of people uh even today messaging me and and saying uh that interview with John was a, an absolute blast. And, yeah, uh, uh, it's a blast. It's a blast in real life. I mean, uh, I, I didn't have the chance, but I'm going to I'm gonna ch- search for it. I want to listen to it. But I know John, and I can tell you, the way you see him on stage is the way he is in real life. It's, it's a cool guy. I love him. I love him. Absolutely. You, you cannot love him. If, if you know him, it, you cannot love him. Well, I'm gonna well, I'm well gonna clo- I'm gonna close out with this. You know, Justin had mentioned towards the beginning of the podcast that he would play uh, No Limits for his friends in, in college, and and similarly, when I was in college, um, I had some friends that were not familiar with metal, and yeah. I would play them that the song Vertigo, and okay. I would play it really loudly. And they, to this day, they say it's one of their favorite metal songs ever. It just gets them so pumped up. So uh, that, that's the, I, I wanted to just kind of circle back to to what Justin said earlier because um, that's always been a favorite of ours. <laughs> you know, a funny thing is when John joined Labyrinth for we were one of the first time we rehearsed. I was just warming up a bit, and there's one song from from the late eighties. I'm loving. It's from a band which is called Power Mad. Yeah, this is great. He I, mentioned this exact story to us, you. and so you're <laughs> going to hear him tell the same thing. But it's just so funny because he he's like, "That's my band." It, 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 it was, that's so. Because so I was funny. playing this riff, which I still yeah. remember. And he started. 
what are you doing? And he explained, I was the drummer. I said, yeah. are, you, are you kidding me? <laughs> That's, that, is, that is absolutely fantastic. Um, yeah. Thank you so much. As we said, you're, we, you're we welcome. sincerely appreciate you're it. Welcome. We wish you all the best, and we'll uh, we'll catch up soon. So, Olaf, you, enjoy you the night. You guys, stay thank safe. You. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.